welcome to the Inside the Hem Sewing Skills Series. No skill can be executed well without the perfect tool. So I'm happy to announce that Clover will be sponsoring this entire series. If you don't know of Clover, they sell uh, quilting supplies and a variety of sewing notions. They're the ones in the green and yellow packaging. I'm sure you've seen it before. Um, they sent me a bunch of tools to be able to show you guys how to perform some of the skills that we are going to cover in this series. In addition to what they sent me, they also sent extras for one of you. That's right. I've got doubles of all the tools and all the notions that I'm going to be covering or using in this series and at the end of it all I'm gonna package them all up and I'm gonna send them off to one of you in order to enter the giveaway all you need to do is leave a comment on this video or any of the videos in the series the more videos you leave comments on the more times you'll be entered to win but leaving multiple comments in one video doesn't count <laughs> one comment per video gets you one entry for up to eight entries. Got it? So let's get into this tutorial. Yes. And I'll Basings are used to finish off a neckline or an armhole if there's no sleeve. Any raw edge that can't just be turned under into a hem. Technically, yes, you could do that on your neckline, but whenever it's super curvy, it's really hard to do that and get it to lay really nicely. So you'll either have a facing, you'll have a lining, or you will have bias tape that will help you uh, finish off those raw edges and make the finished neckline nice and beautiful and flat. So for this neckline, because the back drops down and it isn't a traditional like scoopy back, we have kind of a funky looking facing, but that doesn't change the fact that they are all installed the same exact way. And here are our facing pieces. So you can see this is the back, right? This is where my shoulder will be. Here's the center back. And then here is the front that is cut on the center fold. And after you get those cut out, it ends up looking like this. You have your front neckline facing, and again, that is going to finish off this front neckline, like so. And then you have your back neckline facing, and this is going to finish off all of this edge, all down the back shoulder, across here, and up the other shoulder. So the first thing that we need to do whenever we are going to be sewing facings, did I fuse? <laughs> fuse a little scrap of fabric into my facing. I'm gonna have to get that out. That's right on the seam, uh, seam line. Um, okay, so the first thing you wanna do is interface this. Interfacing is critical when it comes to facings because it gives it a little bit more stability and a little bit more just oomph. And that is what is great for within the seam line. You definitely need that so that your seams don't stretch as much, so they don't get distorted looking. Um, but also, once all this gets flipped to the inside of your garment, you want it to be a little bit stiff so that it stays down and stays into place. So first things first is to interface it. And on your um, pattern pieces, these are not very large, so it doesn't have on here, but in, because the, you know, the facing pieces are so small, it can't include like what all to cut out. But in your cutting instructions, it will tell you um, to cut the interfacing. Let's see if I can find that, yeah. So ABC interfacing uses pieces three and four to cut um, to have your interfacing match up with pieces three and four of your facing fabric, okay? My facing fabric does not match my outer main fabric. And I do this as a fabric saving trick. And also when I'm sewing with something relatively lightweight, like this 100% Pima cotton, sometimes the print can show through and I don't want that. So I will use a solid in as much of a beigey neutral color as I can find in my stash. This is coming across like white, white, but it's actually more of a, I mean, 
off-white, but barely, barely off-white. Nope. One more prepping step before we can actually start sewing things together, and that is to stay stitch your neckline. So we've got our front neckline here, and then our back neckline looks like this. So basically what we are gonna do is sew a row of stitches at our normal stitch length, uh, just barely within the seam allowance. So the seam allowance for the necklines on this pattern are all 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna sew it at a quarter of an inch and that is gonna prevent. This all is cut on the bias, which means the fabric is really stretchy the way that it's woven. Um, but so over time, this will stretch out. Same thing along a curved neckline. Some parts of it, like right here at the center front, are on the straight grain, so that won't stretch out. But all along here, it definitely will. The more that we handle it with our hands, the more that we sew it, and then even after the garment is completely sewn, when you wash it, when you wear it, pull it over your head, all of those things, it can start to stretch out. So the direction of your stay stitches also matter because again, you don't want this to stretch out while you're installing your stay stitches. So you always wanna start from the shoulder and go toward the center. So because our front is cut on the fold, that means our stay stitching is gonna start from here and go to the center, and then we're gonna cut our thread and then start again from up here and go all the way down. All right, my stay stitching is all done. So now we're gonna start assembling this. You need to take your shoulder seams and we are gonna sew those together, easy peasy. Um, like so, right sides together, just like you normally would. And then you're also gonna take your facing pieces and you were gonna sew those at the shoulder seam as well, also right side together. It's gonna look something like this, a little bit more funky on the facing than on the actual okay. garment. So I have sewn the shoulders of my bodice and I went ahead and finished them with the serger as well uh, because we have our sleeve going in here and then our facing is only gonna take up, you know, is that the back, yeah. It's only gonna take up this much. So about an inch or more of your shoulder seam is going to be exposed. So you wanna go ahead and take care of that. Next, I sewed the shoulder seams of the facing. It looks like this. I did not finish the seams on here because you'll never see them and I want to keep bulk down as much as possible. But we will press these open and we will trim these and then is it, does it look like a, um, uh, what's it called, parking meter? I don't know. Um, anyway, so now we need to finish the outer edge, this entire outer edge. And of course, you have options depending on, you know, what kind of garment you're making, what kind of fabric you're making it in. Mine is a very casual cotton top, so I am just gonna surge all along these raw edges keeping in mind that the seam allowance for this outer edge is only a quarter of an inch, right? If that's not written in here anywhere, it does say three eighths of a seam allowance for the inner edge, but for the outer edge, the only reason I know that is because I read the instructions. So no matter how long I've been sewing, I know to just read the instructions because there's always something hidden in there. And right here, basically, it just tells you to turn this under a quarter of an inch from the edge. And that is how you are gonna finish your seam, uh, your raw edges if you weren't going to surge it. So if you're not surging, if you're surging, just do it right on the edge of the blade. If you're not surging, you're turning this under one quarter of an inch and you are edge stitching, which means it's just right close to the raw edge of the fabric. You're not turning it in again. We're just turning it over one time and then stitching it down. Okay, so to sew it to your garment, we are gonna place them right sides together and your facing should match your garment exactly. There shouldn't be a lot of easing or anything funky going on at all. But you are going to, for me, I gotta remember, it's a 3 eighths of an inch um, seam line. I drew those in on this corner so I know exactly where to start and stop and take this turn. Um, but yeah, you just sew all the way around. Okay, and once you get it sewn on, 
you are going to have something like this. This inner part of the facing and the garment is what we're gonna address. Next, we need to trim this down and we need to clip our curves. Now, clipping curves is very, very important. I don't want to downplay it at all, but I also think that sometimes people go a little bit crazy with the clipping. If you do it too much, it will compromise the strength of the seam and your garment won't hold up as long. So for me, I only like to do it every, I don't know, maybe every other inch, um, depending on how tight the curve is. So what that looks like is literally clipping into the seam allowance to your stitching, but not through it. A little notched triangle. Like so. And again, I'm gonna come around here the fabric will kind of tell you, you know, where it needs to be clipped. Um, this part here is kind of flat, so I might just skip that part. And then come here, do another one, and then do one in this little inner part. And then the back is all straight lines. So we don't need, there's no curves there to clip. So we're not gonna worry about that at all. Now, we are going to understitch our facing. If your facing has our traditional 5 8 inch seam allowance, you're going to want to trim it back to 3 8 of an inch, but mine's already there. Okay, understitching is easily one of my most favorite techniques in all of sewing. It really, it works. Um, it produces beautiful results and is so, so easy to do. It has a terrible name, <laughs> which makes it hard to understand sometimes, but really all you're doing is stitching the seam allowances to the facing. So let me get this position so you guys can see correctly. So here are our seam allowances for this, um, for this edge of my back neck. All I'm gonna do is take this to the machine and we are going to stitch the seam allowances very close to the seam line to the facing itself. Not to the actual main fabric, but to the facing. All the way around, we are gonna do that. I like to put it in my machine like this with my edge stitch foot uh, and the little groove of the edge stitch foot right in the seam line. And so then I know I get even stitching from the seam line all the way around. Okay, here's what it looks like before I have pressed anything. I literally just run this through the machine, sewing the seam allowances to the facing all the way around. And so you get a seam line that will be on the inside of your garment after you press it. And doing this will also ensure that the seam line rolls to the inside so that your lining never peeks out. Because you have that extra row of stitching in there, the turn of cloth is going to prevent this from ever rolling out like so. It will always stay just like this without any top stitching or anything. And just like that, your facing is done. When you're pressing this, remember, you do want a little bit of your fashion fabric to be peeking out on the wrong side. You, you definitely want that. Um, but from the outside, you won't see any of your lining at all, which is, which is really, really beautiful. So this pattern uh, will have me go around and uh, top stitch this facing down. You definitely do not have to do that. Uh, you could just uh, tack it at the shoulder seams, right? Just put a little tack right in this seam that you'll never see, it'll be hidden. Um, and I don't know, I can't decide. I can't decide if I want to put that stitching line. I think that it's beautiful without it. So. I'm gonna leave it. Uh, there, I do run the risk of this like flopping out, but it's so small, I think I can tuck it in. The fabric is pretty staple as well. Um, you also want at this point, if you have, uh, what are they called, uh, garment labels, 
you want to go ahead and attach that to your facing now before you get any of this sewn to anything else um, so that that will be ready to go. But that is facings, facings 101. I hope so easy and so beautiful and it's going to tr literally transform your garments, right? I'm going to be keeping a running list in the description box of all of the notions and tools that I'm using throughout the series so that if you guys want to grab any of them, you can easily click through and get what you need. So that is going to do it for today's video. I will be back every single Thursday with a tutorial on a different skill. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to enter the giveaway and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.